This thrift haul is like a bunny overload. Again, there's such good bunnies. Thrift store. There's, seriously, there's tons of bunnies. And I can't control myself to not buy them. But I do, because I'm not taking them all home. So if you like any of these bunnies or any other items that I, you see listed here, hop on over to my website and check them out. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for stopping in. And I have another thrift haul for you. And this one is a bunny overload once again. So I have a few other items. Some of them will be painted, some of them will not. First up, this tin has a removable lid and it is from La Crosse, Wisconsin, which is kind of cool. And it is got some seashells all, I don't know, they're like pewter. They're really, really heavy. And this cost me 99 cents. I thought it would be fun to just give this a little bit of a facelift, a little bit of a C look to it. So maybe some uh, DIY salt wash or DIY, so maybe some DIY shipwrecked, bleh, shipwreck rocks would be good. And that will make that really fun. Two green bottles. I am a flower fanatic when it comes to summertime and I bring flowers in my house every Saturday morning. And I like to put flowers in my bathroom, but I like to just put one single stem in my bathroom. My bathroom right now is blue. But these green vases caught my eye. I couldn't resist them. So these will be listed on my website because this is something I totally love is colored vases to hold a single flower. This one's got some embossing on it and this one is just plain cute. It's a pretty, pretty green. So these are, this one is 99 cents and this one is 59 cents. Again, this one, it has the ribbing on it like it was some kind of jar that had a lid on it, but the lid is no more. And just cute, cute green color. Matches me today. Okay, let's talk about these copper mugs. Look at them. Jamie Ray always drinks out of a copper mug during her thrift hauls. If you've watched her before, you've seen her drink ice water out of a copper mug and she says it stays really, really cold. I know these are Moscow Mule cups and I also looked them up and they're kind of pricey. So I bought these for $2.99 a piece and I will be selling them on my website as is. I have to look up the price, but you know I get a good deal, so you get a good deal, and it won't be the price that people normally sell them for. So go ahead and check them out if you're interested in a copper mug. They are really pretty. If they don't sell by the time it's growing season at my house, I can tell you they're gonna get a, a sedum planted in them. So maybe you should save them from a plant. Here's a crock. This looks like a crock that was maybe um, set on a counter with some wooden spoons in it or spatulas or something, some easy kind of caddy. This one was $1.99. It's perfect condition with this black. And I really do like the IOD traditional crocks transfer. They used to have a stamp. They still do have a stamp. Um, but it's the traditional Crocs transfer. And there's white transfers that I think this is going to look really cute with. So that's where this is going to go. It was $1.99. Second Croc up is this brown one. Doesn't have a price on it. I don't remember what I paid for it. It was probably like 59 cents, something like that. Again, IOD traditional pots transfer is going to be really, really cute on here. So sometimes when you get the crockery stamp or the transfer, the tr traditional pots transfer, and you get multiple items that have that crockery image on it, it's, it just makes a statement. So the more items that you have that are stamped, or have the transfer on them, the more of a statement you'll have. Here is a vase, not a vase, a 
pitcher. I would use it as a vase for flowers, but it's a pitcher, it's $3.99. I'm not sure where, who made it. It does have an embossing on the bottom. I'll show you that. It kind of looks like a maple leaf. So it looks like Fiesta wear, but it's not Fiesta wear. Does anybody know what it is? Can you drop me a comment down below to tell me if you know what the make of this is? It's got ribbing and it also it has no chips or cracks or anything like that. It does have some wear right here on the pitcher part of it, the pour part of it, but my thought was it'd be perfect for flowers. I don't even mind this color. Again, another spot for a traditional pots transfer. A heart, a tin heart. It has some fun embossing on it. It does have a um, over, over distressed finish on it. This was never painted. I will paint it. And then it also is a box. So it's a tin heart box that I think is going to look pretty darn cute. It was $3.99, but again, it's metal. It's going to look really, really cute, painted and distressed. And then it's also a box. I couldn't pass it up. This is just a wood base. I'm sure it's for a candle, for a cloche, for something, whatever, something broke, something got lost. Someone took it to the thrift store and they sold it at the thrift store for 28 cents. I like to find these because they are pretty inexpensive, but when you go and put your display on them, here's a sneak peek. They do make a statement to have it up off the table, especially if this would be painted white, apothecary, any of those fun farmhouse colors. So I like to pick them up whenever I find them and give them a makeover. So watch along and see how this is made up and then I'll display it in the photos. So as long as I gave you a sneak peek, we're gonna do the bunny overload. So I have this bunny. This is a ceramic bunny. Someone had painted it a while ago. I used to do ceramics, so this looks very familiar to me as one that I'd probably done once in my lifetime. I couldn't tell you what that says. CG, maybe? Anyway, you would engrave your initials on the bottom of the ceramics when you would paint, when you would, before you would fire them, like you had to clean them with your tool and then you would cover your initials and then you'd fire it in the kiln. So this one, somebody else did, I didn't do it, but they did a really, really sweet job. She is the sweetest little thing. She's gonna just stay as is. I might give her a little bit of white wax to just really, you know me and my white wax. I just love white wax. She was 79 cents. Bunny number one. Bunny number two is this velvet bunny. And back in the day, I remember these. I don't know how old they are. This one was ceramic and it's got that velvet coating on it and also pink eyes. So this looks familiar to me, but I don't remember where I've seen it. I don't know if my mother had it, my grandmother had it. My mother-in-law, I don't know, but it looks very familiar to me and it just took me back in time. So this is 49 cents for this little guy. Bunny number three is this sweet little bunny. It's got a flower and a butterfly and he's got a cute little face. I just find in the bunnies right now and I'm sure it's because it's Easter time, but bunnies are cute no matter what, just on your spring decor. It doesn't have to be Easter. So this is 59 cents for this little guy. He's so sweet. That's three. Bunny number four. If you've seen a thrift haul of mine previous to this one, I did this bunny in mint chip. And this one is really, it's painted really nice. The eyes are really nice, nice on it. The pink little nose and mouth and ears. I might just do something original with this one and not really change him a whole lot. So he's wood, he's 99 cents. 
Bunny number five. Here is a bunny hauling a wheelbarrow with an egg in it and then the other bunny pushing it on the back. Such a sweet little figurine is this. And it's got those muted colors, painted perfect. I love it, 39 cents. Bunny number six, I told you I had a bunny overload. Bunny number six is from Kmart back in the day. And it's a salt shaker or pepper, I'm not sure which one, but it's this cute little bunny with a yellow bow sitting in some green grass. And it was 39 cents. I will not change him and he does not have a pepper. He doesn't have a mate. But I do have bunny number seven is also a salt or pepper shaker and he's a little sleepy bunny he's got his jammies on and his eyes are closed and he's really sweepy and he's 39 cents so he has no chips or cracks his little stopper is in so is this little kmart one his little stopper in as well this one's so old that that stopper feels like really rigid like if you took that out it would probably break so that's not coming out of there and uh, i just thought he was the sweetest little thing the sleepy little bunny and then i have a whole bag of bunnies there are two different poses there's a whole bag of bunnies there's a pose where he's up on his hind feet and a pose where he is sitting on all fours. So there are one, two, three, four, five of him in an up pose and four of him just laying down on all fours. So look at the sweet little set of bunnies and they're so tiny, but they were all in this bag for $1.99 nine bunnies for $1.99. That's it for my bunnies. That's all the bunnies I have. There's a little ducky that I have though. He's 49 cents and he's a little chicky, a little chick or a little duck. I'm not really sure which one. Is he a chick or a duck? I think a chick. Okay, we think a chick. So I will, I don't mind his paint job with his little orange foot right here and his orange beak. I probably wouldn't do much different to him, but I'm going to give him some white wax because it's just gonna soften him up a little bit. He's kind of bold. A piece of wood with the word porch stenciled on it. This, it looks like a pallet board. It's in really good shape. Um, it's got no splinters or anything. Someone painted it really well and just wrote the word porch with a stencil. I don't really like this stencil look, but I don't mind the word porch. So I'm going to revamp this porch sign and make it just a little bit more fun, a little bit more Connie style. So this was 69 cents. This basket, does anybody recognize this basket before I tell you where it's from? It is a very well-made basket and it has wood strips on the bottom. It was 2.99 for this basket but it's a Longenberger basket from Austin, Ohio. And this one was made in 1999 because they stamp it on the bottom. They write when they made it, but it's a Longenberger basket and they're very expensive baskets. This one I got for $2.99 and it'll be listed on my website. It's really cute. I can just see putting some flowers or something in here in little pots like this and putting a flower in there and having something else in your basket, maybe a bunny. Not much, I gotta fix up this thrift haul, so it might get out a little bit quicker than my last one. Here's a big tray. This is really, really hard plastic and it has some leaves and acorns that are all the way around the outside of it. I'm not really I don't really like the leaves and the acorns. So what I think I'm going to do is give this a nice heavy coat of salt wash or 
some IOD molds. So make sure you follow along and see how I fix this tray up. In the summertime, I really like trays because I can take my drinks or my supper out to the patio table. And this one is really sturdy. You, it's not gonna be flimsy whatsoever, no matter what you put on here. So I really like my trays for delivering food or drinks to the patio table. That's all I have for you for this thrift haul. Follow along and you'll see how I fix these all up. And I will see you at the end to give you a little bit more inspiration of how you can create your own. And if you would like any DIY or IOD products or any of these thrift hauls, please visit thepaintedphotographer.com. Subscribe to this channel. We're gonna add some age to this porch sign. So I need a little bit of DIY brown paint, a little bit of Summer Crush. Doing some batch painting of signs today, so I am mixing up a little bit more than I would need for this one side. So you're gonna mix those two together. You don't have to be real precise with it. Just get it on there. Then I'm gonna take my IOD brayer and go in to the paint. Get in a nice layer on the brayer. Then I'm using my IOD Distress Stamp and taking the DIY paint and running it right over only half of this Distress Stamp. Then I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over. And now we got some nice age to this board. I'm going in different directions so I don't get the same shape. The paint on the stamp dries a little bit quicker, so stamping it more than once, you get a very light image the second time around versus when you do that with, with uh, ink. Now I'm gonna take my paint spatula and I'm gonna go into some of this paint and make some really definite distress marks. If you get too many, or like here, I got a really big spot on there. Don't worry. I think the more distressed it looks, the better. So we're gonna let this dry and I'll be right back. To make these letters not look like a, like a stencil, we're gonna go ahead with some little black dress and a small artist brush. And we're gonna fill in that space. I already put the rust over top of some of these letters. So I don't wanna take that all away, but there. That's how we're gonna make this not look so much like a stencil. And more like a hand-painted metal sign.
a porch sign that is no longer a stencil. I wanted that more distressed look, so I took my orbital sander and I went right over top of everything and gave it more of a aged look. And then I also like the back sides of my boards to look as nice as the front. So I made sure that any extra paint that the person before me had put on there, I got rid of. Then I'm going to use my big top. This is my um, container that includes my big top that it does not get um, contaminated with dipping the brush in it. So I went right over top of that entire sign with the big top. We're gonna age our porch sign. The big top is completely dry. We're gonna go in and do those edges. They're already painted black, but this brown is a nice accent for that. Then we're gonna go ahead and bring some of that dark and decrepit over the face of the sign, making sure to get in all the crevices. I'm working in the breeze. So if you're not in the breeze, this probably goes a little bit better, but I have some wind I'm dealing with. And I'm gonna wipe some of that back off. There's our nice aged porch sign. No longer looks like a stencil job. These are a couple pots that I had in my thrift haul. This one black one, it has a little bit of blemishes on it. I'm not really sure if I'm gonna keep it as is or not, but this is the new traditional pots transfer and it is a really really good transfer i'm just really liking it a lot it has white and blue designs which is different than the last time so here's the book and i'm going to flip through a couple of the pages one of the pages that was really hard to see is you can't see that white graphic on a white paper so that one was tough to see so what I needed to do was I wanted to find one of these white graphics for that brown crock that I have because I just think that it will look so much better. So there's the reference on the back and I really needed to look at that to know where to cut, to know what my design looked like because let me, let me tell you, you can't see that very well at all. So I went ahead and I cut out my design on the back side. I looked again, where was that that I needed to cut? So I got it all cut out and then I applied it to that brown crock. There was a little bit of a lip on that brown crock. So when I went to put the design on there, it didn't lay completely flat. You can see that it's kind of buckling a little bit. So the first thing I did was I transferred that image on the top of that and then I took my scissors and I cut that lip off just so the rest of the time that I was needing to put the transfer on there that it laid flat on the rest of the crock so as soon as I could lay it down flat and it wasn't buckling up it went a lot better You want to put a coat of big top or wax over top of your transfer just to seal it into that crock and not have it come off. And I don't think it'd come off anyway, but I just really like to seal it in anyway. This big top went over this brown crock nice. I didn't have any issues with it being cloudy or anything. It dried really clear. On this black one, I decided to use some salt wash mixture just because that black crock was, I was seeing blemishes and I didn't really like it. So I went ahead and added some salt wash to my DIY paint and got like a pasty 
paint and uh, this would make it look more like a concrete. See, I scratched my fingernail and you can see it. So it was just, I would just feel better if I painted it. So I'm giving this one coat of the gravel road salt wash mixture and I'm not stippling. I'm just really um, swiping back and forth to give it more of a hand pottery look to it. I gave it a second coat. I didn't do that on camera, but I then I went and I peeled off the painter's tape from around the lip of it, and it really has a nice crisp edge, especially with this little lip on there. And so here is the gravel road. It looks kind of white, but it definitely is a little bit of a gray color. So I sealed it up with my big top, again, using my big top into a different container so that if it gets contaminated, I'm only contaminating a small amount versus the entire jar. So there I went ahead and put the big, big top onto the gravel road salt wash mixture and it gets that gray look back to it. The lip, I kept the original black and just sealed it with the big top. And it took the big top and sealed off the lid as well. I don't think I'm going to get tired of this transfer. So this is, again, the traditional pots transfer. And I'm using a black image this time and putting it right on top of that gravel road big top mixture there. And this one laid nice and flat. It kind of has a diagonal um, design to it, which makes it look like it was, you know, like, put around something that was more radius, but this is exactly how the transfer looked as it did go downward versus straight across to the crock. So just using my tool, my IOD tool, I put that transfer right on there and I absolutely love the results. This bunny was cute as is. Someone did a really good job of painting it, but I wanted to soften it a bit. So DIY white wax to the rescue. That's it. That's all I did to this bunny and it made a huge difference. Same thing with that little chick. He was really bright yellow, so I wanted him to mute down just a little bit more than he did, so I actually left the white wax on him for a little bit longer, and he still didn't mute down as much as I had liked him to, but all it is is just the white wax, and just wipe it back with a clean cloth, and in 24 hours, just buff it back to a nice finish. white wax to this little guy too. He was painted um, just an off white color. He did had a really good paint job done to him, kind of an age look. And so I just added the white wax to him as well. He's wood and went over the entire thing and doesn't make a huge difference, but it does make a nice subtle difference. And then I stuck a little lavender in his paws, cute as a bug. On to this metal tin heart. I needed to use up that gravel road with the salt wash in it, so I added a coat of the gravel road to this tin box just so I didn't waste the paint. And it doesn't have much texture to it, but enough to give it a little bit of dimension. And I went right over the top, and I believe off camera I gave it a second coat, which you didn't see. And, oh, you do see it. Uh, there it is, me giving it a second coat. So I'm covering up all of that off-white color that was on there. And then uh, this wood round, I painted mint chip and uh, put a really good coat of mint chip on there and thought it would make a good base. 
and we'll see what I do with it soon. The new paint inlay from IOD Paradise is what I chose to put on that wood blank. And so I found a piece of that inlay that would, I love those coral flowers, and I thought it would go really well on there. Not up and down, silly. Sideways. There you go. Um, that's a good layout. So I went ahead and I used the lines that were included on this paint inlay, and I cut out the section that I needed. And uh, then I will apply a coat of wet paint and put this paint inlay on the wet paint. You position the paint inlay over top of the wet paint and then you smooth it down. So I'm trying to get all of the wrinkles out of there. If I do have wrinkles, I kind of like them anyway, but it's nice to kind of smooth it down. I take a spritz bottle and I spritz water on it and then I go back and I kind of wipe some of that so that it doesn't puddle on top of there. You just need to moisten the back of that paper so that the paint inlay can adhere to your wet paint layer. So you're going to take this and move it off to the side for about, um, depending on your drying conditions, it's going to be about 25 to 30 minutes or so. And I do like to take the brayer and burnish that image in there a little bit more. It kind of helps it adhere. I took this paint inlay and thought, let's put it on top of this grooved heart surface. So I went ahead and I cut out just some areas that I really liked and I fit them in there. So I'm going to let you watch this process.
Now it's dry, it's ready to be removed. I go ahead and I take a wet cloth and a little bit of a spritz and I moisten that backside. Yep, you're gonna moisten it, you're gonna let it dry and then you're gonna moisten it back up again. So get it moist, let it sit for just a few minutes and then you're gonna take that paper and you're gonna pull it back and your inlay is going to be on there. This is not a perfect process. It, you're not going to get a perfect image every single time you do it. And it, you're not going to get a perfect image on every surface. But this is, it's a process where it's going to look more vintagey, And that's what I was going for is kind of like an old vintage wallpaper on here. You want to seal them up using Big Top. Most people will have to spray it first with a sealer. I can actually go over top of the inlay after it dries for 24 hours. I never do it right away. I always let it dry for at least 24 hours. And then as long as I don't overwork the surface, it will not bleed those paints and smear them around. So I'm going over top of this, look at this tin. It is so vintagey, and uh, then I wanted some to actually DIY bring out wax. some of the details. So I went in with a and clear wax over top of my dried big top. top, and uh, so I went with a clear wax, is, and uh, then I took the I dark and decrepit dust. dust. So the DIY dust, which you can control just a little bit better, so and I take a small paintbrush, in. tap some of it off. Get put that there, dust onto the areas kind of that I want it to be it dark and aged. And it got a little bit much here, but I can spread it around and melt it into wax. that clear wax. So you want that clear wax on there first so that it actually has something to melt into. So I'm actually aging the top of this tin heart and I it. love kind of the nice results that, that I got. Wax. That's why you need the clear wax on there. And you're just going to smush it in there and uh, get it in all the creases. And then we're going to take just a paper towel, dry paper towel, and take some of it off. Looks like we took quite a bit of it off, so you can go back in. There's a really vintagey heart.
There we have. Here are these two aged. same color, not one aged, aged one not aged. I one. like the dark look to it, so we're going to do the same thing to this wood blank. Another item that we had was this tin seashell container. I don't know what we want to call it. It had some seashells on the top. I painted that mint chip. I kind of like to keep my thrift hauls within the same color family. So I did that mint chip. I gave it a little bit of an age to it and that distressed those edges, distressed some of those seashells that were on the top. And I also made sure that there was no excess paint inside the tin or anywhere else. I went in with some clear wax and waxed the entire piece to protect it so that when I go ahead and I'm going to use the Vertigus wax and I went and I put that on and the clear wax was kind of like a barrier so it actually moved around a little bit more. So the the shipwreck wax gets into all the crevices and stays in there and makes it look real beachy. Y'all seen this tray that I had. It's a plastic tray and it's got some leaf patterns on it, which I didn't care for. I'm going to go ahead and use the old school, which is a dark gray from DIY and a touch of paint frosting. And I'm going to make a really thick paint that's going to be able to cover up that embossed heart look. So I mix this up right away. It gets thick immediately, but I let this sit until I had all of my other um, products done. And then I went back to it, which would, it became a little bit thicker than this, but that paint frosting is a great product for thickening up your paint if you want a smoother um, paint than the salt wash. So there it is after it sat for a while, like it's not coming off my paintbrush unless I force it to come off my paintbrush. So I went ahead and I brushed it on and then I kind of stippled over top of some of those embossed areas, making it real rough looking. And it covered up those leaf patterns beautifully.
Here's a little bit of a close-up of what that all looks like. I like to use up old products before I buy new ones, and this happens to be a Amy Howard Crackle finish, and I don't remember what the name of it is called. I don't even know if they make it anymore, but this, you put it on clear and you let it dry for 24 hours, and then you go ahead and you put your um, new coat of chalk paint over the top. And as it dries, you only get one chance. You can't rebrush over top of this. It's a one once and done kind of brush stroke on here. So as soon as I painted this paint on, it seemed to start to crackle a little bit. I really wanted a heavy crackle. So I went ahead and I used my heat gun and then I took my fingers and tried to pull some of the paint off as I was heat gunning it, which seemed to work really well. So it has a nice crackle, missing paint kind of look to it now. A quick layer of the white swan, no crackle on the bottom here, and there will be two coats. Okay, I think I'm gonna do this paint inlay. This is the Morocco paint inlay that just came out, and it's got a real boho vintage feel to it. So I'm gonna put it on the bottom of this tray. Not really sure if that's my thing or not, but. We're gonna try it. What I'm gonna do is go in with a coat of the white swan paint. So you wanna make sure that your paint is wet. And I actually don't mind wrinkles. So if it has a little bit of thickness to it, that's that's okay as well. So going in, putting that paint on the bottom, you wanna make sure that it's wet because if it's not wet, your paint inlay will not stick to it. All right, there we go. We got a wet layer of paint. You're gonna put the inlay side down. This just so it fits the bottom of this. And you got a little bit of time to move it around. Not a lot, but a little bit. I'm gonna smooth that in there. I cut a little tiny piece and we're gonna fit that in there right where it belongs. It doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, it's supposed to be kind of vintagey. Okay, seal that onto that wet paint. I am using this paint spatula, that are not a paint spatula. This is called a paint blade. And smoothing this on with the paint blade, getting out some of those bubbles, adhering it down. Then we're gonna take a spray bottle and wet it. And I will take a paper toweling and go on top of it, pushing it into that wet paint, making sure that it's all pushed down, adhered right to that paint, and then we're gonna let it do its magic. This paint inlay is dry. We're gonna take it off. 
And all I have is a piece of paper toweling and a mist bottle. I'm gonna mist it. Moistening the back side. Getting the back side moist is what's going to make that come off a lot easier. Isn't it gonna be pretty? We're gonna start on this side. It sat here for a bit. Oh yeah. You can save this and you can use it a second time. Now we're gonna pull off this big sheet. Look at that. How fun is that? We do have some of that vintage look it didn't adhere real well down there. It adhered real well here. It's so pretty. What do you think? We're gonna finish it. I let my paint inlay dry for 24 hours and then I go back onto it with some big top and I lightly brush over top of it and not smearing that inlay. If you are worried about that, use a spray sealer to protect it the very first time and then go over with the DIY Big Top. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. And until next time, happy painting.